drivers? What's a creepy story you've got from the middle of nowhere? Part 4. Unwind and enjoy. If you like what you see, hit subscribe and let your friends know about Thread Taunt. Account 1. Not me, but an ex-girlfriend's cousin's uncle. Yeah, I know it's a friend of a friend situation, but it was a well-known tale among the family. He was driving on a Mexican road at night. He felt a call of nature, so he parked on the sideway and jumped off the truck. He walked to relieve himself, and while doing that, he felt a presence beside him. He pointed his flashlight at his side and saw, standing beside him, a small deformed person. It was naked and had both its head and face bloated, and he was standing just there. The driver, XGF's cousin's uncle, ran away to his truck, jumped in, and drove away from there. There's been a lot since I talked with my ex. We're cool, but not too much in touch. But if you want to know more, I could ask her about the fuzzy details. Account 2. I used to live in Guadalajara, Jalisco, and once a year I'd make the drive up to the border to renew my residential permit or whatever, don't remember. Anyways, a lot of weird shit shows up on Mexican highways at night, from bridges that aren't there to shadows that cross the highway in front of you. One time I got stopped at a checkpoint in Sinaloa, and my truck was inspected by soldiers who were in those tunnels that ran under the floor of your car. Nothing happened, but imagine my surprise when I found out the Mexican army didn't have an official checkpoint in that area. Could have easily ended up dissolved in a barrel somewhere in MX. Point of story. Don't drive through Mexico at night. Unless you're part of a convoy and have a minigun mounted on top of your car. Account 3. Truck driving. Many years ago I did that. Long hours and always tired because the dispatcher always thought you were behind. But there were some good stories. This one guy, when he saw another company truck at a rest stop and the driver was sleeping over the steering wheel, he would put on this gorilla mask he had and stand on the running board and knock on the window. Of course, the driver invariably almost suffered a heart attack, and a couple even chased him around threatening great bodily harm. I was sitting in my truck one day waiting to load in a line of other trucks. One guy opens his door and stands on the running board like he is pissing off the side. Except he has this huge dildo in his hand. The next truck coming around the corner, the driver stared wide-eyed at this guy, who then proceeded to casually tap the huge penis against the hot exhaust pipe as if he is shaking off a couple of piss drops. The other driver almost hit the building. Account 4. My uncle is a truck driver in Guatemala. Small town, with just a single road that passes through. I used to love sitting outside at night on the hammock, listening to his chilling stories. I'll start with the scariest ones. Can you see them? My uncle said he hired a guy from town to help him drive late shifts at night with him on the road. Story was, the guy had somehow managed to burn a house down as a kid and has since claimed to see the dead. Would occasionally swerve on the roads at nothing, or worse, my uncle said he would be sitting around when the guy would say, I see a little girl on the swing. My aunt confirmed it, said he would say things like that often. Apparently, he learned to live with it or some scary third-world shit. 2. The Cave My uncle said one night he was sleeping above the trailer bed, when suddenly in the distance he could see a small light approaching. As it got closer, he had a chilling realization. He described seeing a really, really old, wrinkly woman who held a candle, draped in dark gowns. He said her nails were so long they curled. She walked into a cave opening and disappeared. My uncle said he noped out there real fast. 3. The Horse My uncle often likes to talk about spirits. He said one night while sleeping, a giant rabid horse tried to climb onto his truck. It would rock it back and forth, and the truck weighs an ungodly amount. He said when the rocking stopped, he jumped in and left. This is just the stories that I have from my uncle. I have also experienced paranormal stuff, and so has my family. Banging on the back windows with no one there, lights flashing at 3 a.m., and countless others. Guatemala is no joke, Lowell. Count five. A few years back, I was driving home after a shift. It was 3 or 4 a.m., and I was tired but not exhausted. It's a deserted state route in the middle of nowhere, and it's pretty common not to see a single car during the 30-mile trip. I drive this road multiple times a week. It's mostly open fields and some farmland through this 30-mile stretch. This particular night it was cold, but the sky was clear. Like no clouds or anything, and I actually love nights like this because you can see the stars so well without light pollution. 
Anyway, about halfway back home, I come over this hill to a two or three mile straight stretch. A huge, dark object about the length of a pickup truck, but far rounder and thicker catches my attention as it's just hovering about 50 feet in the air, 50 or 60 feet off the road over a farm field. There's a very bright red light coming out of the side or bottom. I couldn't tell exactly where it originated from because it was so bright. As I was going about 50 miles past it, I only had a few seconds to look at it, but the image is burned into my mind. I have no idea what it was. I wanted to turn around, but I was kind of freaked out. I'm sure alien life exists somewhere, but as for visiting our planet, I don't know. But if I ever had to paint a picture of what I think a UFO could look like, I'd paint whatever the fuck I saw that night. Unfortunately, I haven't seen anything odd over that area since that night. Count six. Not exactly relevant, but still creepy AF. My dad is a trucker, and about 20-some years ago, a woman committed suicide by running out in front of him. He said that every night around the time she died, the cab of his truck would drop a few degrees in temperature, and he felt a presence. He said this went on for a few weeks, and finally he spoke out to her and said he forgave her and wished that she had peace. He said he never experienced the eeriness again. Account 7. Not a truck driver, but years ago I was driving with my ex-girlfriend back from a wedding in northern Wisconsin, heading towards Madison where she lived. We were probably like 20 or 30 miles away from the city at that point, and it was probably around 1 a.m. My GPS, which was some really cheap brand that my dad got me as a gift from Radio Shack, had me going through some backcountry highways for some reason after I had stopped for gas, instead of getting me back on the expressway right away. I didn't mind. I kind of always found those really peaceful. Even though at night, they are pretty creepy. My girlfriend was asleep in passenger seat, so I had turned down the music really quiet to not wake her, which added a bit to the eeriness of it all. I'm like really into this groove of driving, focused on the roads because it was so dark without streetlights everywhere. Then something on the side of the road catches my eye. It was a giant mountain lion with what appeared to be blood all over its face. I start shaking my girlfriend awake to get her to see it before it was gone. But she woke up too late. I pulled over to the side of the road and asked her to watch the rear view so she could see this huge thing cross the road, but it never did. She was convinced that I imagined it all because that area of Wisconsin is not known for mountain lions. But I swear I saw it. Account 8. I'm not a truck driver, and this isn't involving a truck, but here's my story. I was driving on a cross-country road trip through the middle of nowhere, Kansas, when I had one of my tires blow out. I pulled over and went to call DA, but I had no service on my phone. So I got out and started the process of trying to change the tire myself. After a very short while, a cop pulled up and asked if I needed help. I said, yes, thank you, officer, and he said, "'Cause you're in luck, I just so happen to know the best tow truck driver. He could take you into town and you could get all fixed up, no problem. The mosquitoes were eating me alive, and frankly, I only had a donut-style replacement tire and no clue how to properly change it. So I said, yes, please, and the officer gave the tow truck a call. After another short while, the tow truck arrived and the officer left. The driver asked, where am I towing you to? So I was like, I'm not sure, to town, I guess. Somewhere where I can get my tire fixed. He said, well, you're in luck, because I know the guy at the only place that's open right now who can fix that for you. I said, okay, sounds good, and he towed us to the auto repair place. This was basically a ghost town, if you could even call it a town. The tow truck driver and the repair guy sat around and bullshitted for a couple of hours while my tire was being fixed. Bear in mind, there was nobody else there but me and my passengers. There was nobody else anywhere within sight. The town was empty except for the gas station connected to the repair place. Finally, they came out and said I was all set and gave me both my bills, one for the repair and one for the tow. $1,200 in total, for one tire and a five-mile tow. For a 1991 Grand Am, that wasn't even worth that much. I was furious but had no options, so I gave him my credit card and he was like, sorry guy, we're a cash-only kind of town, hey, hey. I was like, okay then. Well, I don't have any cash on me, so how are we going to settle this up then? And he was like, well, you're in luck. Because there's an ATM next door at the gas station my buddy owns. So I went to the gas station and took out the maximum I could on three on four different cards, each with a $20 dollar withdrawal fee. I looked behind the counter, and in addition to the gas station attendant, there stood the cop, 
the tow truck driver and the repair guy all munching on Doritos and having a good laugh. I'm pretty sure I got hosed and potentially maybe even sabotaged. Looking back, that cop sure arrived really quickly and my other three tires were all still relatively new. I had to cut my trip short and invest in cortisone cream for the million mosquito bites. TLDR. Kansas ghost town folk drained me of $1,200 and I'm pretty sure they were highway pirates. Account 9. Not a truck driver, but was on the final leg of a 16-hour drive from Florida to northern Ohio with a caravan of about eight cars and half of us drivers, most of us up for 12-plus hours at this point and everyone else in the cars sound asleep, swear we saw a man walking his dog on the side of I-75 in the middle of nowhere between Cincinnati and Dayton at 3 a.m. To this day, still don't know if that was real or we were hallucinating. But either way, it was pretty creepy. Account 10. I posted this in another thread. Not a truck driver, but do a lot of driving for work, and I just like driving. Driving from Spokane, WA, to Omaha, NE, was cruising down Highway 212 in the middle of the night in southern Montana. About 2 a.m., I'm pulling through the only town, Lame Deer, MT maybe? I've tried to find it on a map since, but can't be certain, on that lonely stretch of highway. One stoplight town and I get stopped at the only red light. Hadn't seen a vehicle on the road since I had hopped off I-90 about an hour prior, and there wasn't a single person outside in the town. Sitting at that red light, a loud siren alarm starts sounding. Loud enough that I don't see how any person in the town or within a few miles could have slept through it. It reminded me of the siren from the movie Silent Hill. I gunned it through the red light and away from that town as fast as my little four-cylinder Malibu would go. It may not seem that crazy, but just imagine the most haunting sound you've ever heard. In a place you've never been. Several hours separated from seeing a person last. I'm sure there's an innocent explanation for the siren, but it still sends chills down my spine just thinking of it. Account 11. Not truck driving and not tired hallucinations. I had three friends helping me around midnight one night get a big toolbox into a storage unit before I could PCS to Texas. After I offered to take them to Waffle House for food as payment since it was about the only place open at the time. We left the unit around 2 a.m. and made our way to the Waffle House, driving through the Chickamauga battlefield in Georgia to get to it. The place is terrifying to drive through on a regular night, but my friend and I thought we would have some fun with the other two who didn't grow up in the area. They didn't know any of the ghost stories of the park, so we told them some while we were driving to kind of spook them a bit. Ghosts on the sides of the road, green eyes, the mysterious ghostly panther creature, the hill your car will roll up when off, rear view mirror ghosts, the works. We took a turn down a side road that leads to an old bridge that has the old stop and turn your engine off and it won't turn back on story. We get to the bridge, stop and turn off the engine, sit for a minute, start it up and kept driving with no problems. Nothing happened, just some harmless college kid fun. We drive over it and go around a corner and standing in a ditch is a black mass just larger than a man. It doesn't move really. And even though the headlights panned across it directly, none of us can tell what it is. It's just black. All four of us screamed and I gassed it out of there, nearly sliding in a ditch to get away. All of us saw it, and none of us could explain what it was, and still have no idea two years later. Account 12. Airline pilot here, that kind of counts. In the air, probably the creepiest thing I've heard was the distress call of a small general aviation aircraft going down. This was around 2014 in the PNW. He had just blown a cylinder head and oil was shooting out all over his windshield. You could hear the panic in his voice as he radioed out that he couldn't see and was trying to report his position to a few airliners so that they could relay it to ATC. I checked the news that night and he actually died in the crash. It was a pretty eerie feeling that we heard the last words of a pilot fighting for his life while we were just cruising along above the clouds at 35,000 feet, completely powerless to do anything other than reach out to him over the radio. Account 13 not a truck driver, but one night my friends and I were driving through a lightless valley around 1 a.m. Suddenly my headlights catch on an object in the middle of the road and I shit you not, it's a man made out of tumbleweed. We don't even have tumbleweed where I live. It appeared very suddenly and I was so confused by its shape that I didn't break or swerve. As we collided with it, my friend and I in the front seat both screamed. 
but nothing. No impact. We drove right through it, but it was just air. Both of my friends in the back seat were very confused why the two of us in the front screamed suddenly. So, like, I know it wasn't just me. My friend saw it too. Account 14. Creepy bugger who lived on a ranch in the middle of nowhere wanted to show me his dope-ass man cave basement and wouldn't stop hitting on me while I'm just trying to deliver some damn stone. Thank fuck I had my winch bar and pepper spray. I literally dropped shit as fast I could cause I already unstrapped and had my forklift down. Told the boss I'll never go back after. Only reason I didn't flat out run for it anyways was cause I was driving a three-ton death machine and I didn't see a gun. My lil forklift is quick. I'm a fucking tiny ass chick and the company sent out a gym bro ripped co-worker next. That dude got the same treatment from the creepy guy and thought he was gonna get kidnapped too. Ugh. In like three years doing this shit, that's the only time I've been worried like that. They stopped sending people after David came back scared too. Probably not the type of creepy op is looking for, but whatevs. Count 15. I was on a long haul eastbound. Nothing but me, the miles, and the night. On runs like this, I fall into a zone with the hum of the tires and vibration of the road coaxing me into a rhythm, not noticing details along the way. Illinois, Indiana, the long drag of Ohio, Pennsylvania. The miles rolled on. Slowly, I realized something had changed. I was seeing lights. The farther I went, the more there were. Suddenly, I jerked to attention with the realization what was happening. Oh God, oh fuck. I was in Philadelphia. 